Oh gosh, I've been so busy. I put together an entire puzzle. Can you believe that? I'm exhausted. This is more of a fireside chat. Got the fireplace. I made you coffee, okay? Hey, it's on like Donkey Kong, man. <laughs> Last night. My two grandkids and I, we had a good time. The parents are gone. They went off to a hotel room. This gave them a chance. They knew I was, that they were safe with me. Safe with me, yeah. <laughs> it was funny. Um, so yeah, here's some footage of some of our escapades. It's on my Donkey Kong. Okay, I hit it. It's gonna be somewhere totally random that we will never say goodbye. Grab a hug! Okay, you get to hide the next one. You guys go to the I'm gonna hide this. Where do you think I should hide it? I was thinking maybe I should hide this right under. Okay, let's see. Oh, it fits. Okay. Can you guys keep a secret? A silly little secret. Okay. Who would think to look under there? I'll be hot and cold, and when they dare, they dare, they won't know. Ready! Sixty-five, sixty-six, sixty. Yeah, it's under the. Uh, it's under here. Mm -hmm. It's under here. Is it? <laughs> hot. Am I doing hot? Am I light hot? Maybe, I don't know. I'm doing hot or cold. Hot. It's light hot. Super hot. Volcano hot. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> Got it! Woo! Okay. Okay. Now he gets to hide it. Yeah! I'm gonna go and hide it. Gonna go and hide it. But. but. Yeah, we had a good time last night. It feels like I stayed up late, but in reality, staying up till 10.30 here is like going and going to bed is like going to bed at 7.30, which I normally do in Tucson. And then I woke up at around 7, which is 4 o'clock, which I normally do. So everything is... It's still moving clockwork in that respect. But boy, it is so different being in a house. Wow. You know, <laughs> I just, one thing I noticed being in a house is I know I'm going to be here 
I mean, I'm relaxing. We don't have to go places all the time. I don't, I've seen Cincinnati. I don't have to go see the sights. I want to be with my family. So I could care less what I look like. <laughs> I just went in a van. I would get up and get going. And I knew I was going to go into the gym. I wanted to look nice. Then I knew I might go out for breakfast. I want to look nice. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. I did different things there. But here, living in a house, I really don't care. <laughs> I just don't care. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it truly is a nice vacation. It really is. Well, here's some more. We did um, We did the puppet show. I did tell you we were going to do a puppet show. It was, um, we didn't really have a script, so we were winging it, okay? <laughs> but it was fun. So here's the puppet show. Get to know, get to know, you're now watching the Mini Van Lee Show. Yay. Say your name. My name's Cyan. His name is, I, I forget his name's house. Fox, my name is Foxy. Yeah. Fox, your name is Foxy? Okay, yeah. yeah. Oh, my name is Albert. I'm a boy fox. And I love Foxy. What have you been doing, Foxy? I've been hanging out in my home. What have, you been, what have you been doing? Sadly. Cyan? I, I haven't really been doing that much, but I, I could say I've been uh, making friends. I, know. I, know. I heard you've been reading a lot. Oh, yeah, true. I you gotta talk loud. Talk loud. I have read, like, a lot of Ronald Dahl. Ronald Dahl's book, like, um, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. That's a good one. There's Foxy. You left. Uh, where did you go, Foxy? I I shopping for the the meat. I'm yeah. gonna give you a kiss. Hey. Can I kiss you? No. Oh, get back over here. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, thanks for watching our show. What else you got to say, Cyan? Yeah, but uh, we had fun. It was a lot of fun. My granddaughter and I, we did a lot of puppet shows. We did a lot of things when she was younger. We were, um, I was always filming her. So she's good in front of the camera. She really is. And, uh, but um, my uh, grandson, he hasn't spent a lot of time with me. When I left Cincinnati, he was only, he was a baby. So as he was getting older, they would send me pictures. What a handsome young man he is. Wow, he's like, he's pretty. And uh, so it's good that I can um, inject some of my fun into um, into his life too. I think I'll probably come more often. I'll fly. I'm no expert on being a grandmother. I am no expert whatsoever. But in my life and my way of thinking, is do not inject your opinions. Just don't inject your opinions. They're, your your children are adults now and they're gonna raise their children the way they want to. I mean, unless there's abuse going on, but they're gonna raise their children the way they want to. And just just enjoy them. I do not inject my opinions. I might ask questions like, because I am curious, like, well, how do they do this? Oh, you know, and I just, I'm interested in how they have uh, their routine set up because I find it interesting. I'll tell you my granddaughter, she reads all the time. I remember, <laughs> I remember um, I was trying to help her to read and she fought it all the way. She would cry like, leave me alone, leave me alone. So I did. Eventually, um, eventually she was ready. I believe children have their own timeline when they're ready to learn something. And we can't, but in, when they go to school, 
the first grade they do this and second grade they do this. But there are children who are not ready for that at that age, maybe the next year. And when we force them to learn something at a certain time, we really turn them off and they may not wanna ever do it again. I remember when I was younger, I did not like to read at all. I didn't like to read. Do not force me to sit down and read. And you know, I almost don't, I'm not that, that keen on reading as it is. I mean, I do like to read. I like to gather information. I read it and I've learned how to scan information. I kind of scan it to look for the, the high points when I do research. And of course, you know, in, in college, you know, I did my reading, but I, I was listening to audio books for a long time so I could still do things. I think I'm a, just an active person and I like to, um, do two things at once. <laughs> Sometimes I can do, do the routine things and you're just on autopilot, but I have a book going on in my, in my ears and in my mind. So I'm envisioning things, but I'm just doing, you know, boring things like housework, things like that, cooking. And I would um, listen to audiobooks. But, you know, it makes me wonder, maybe I had, maybe they were trying to teach me to read before I was really ready for it. So I got kind of turned off by it. But, so, you know, my granddaughter, she was not forced to read. I mean, she she was on her own timeline. And I think she they was, she was held back a year, but I'll tell you what, she reads all the time. She's got her head in a book. She reads, reads, reads. <laughs> and so we said um, in the, uh, in the puppet show, you know, my character, um, Albert, you know, said, well, what have you been doing? I've been here, I hear you read a lot. And yeah, she can quote authors. Oh my gosh, she's nine years old. So it's pretty cool watching that, yeah. I did have a question I want to answer for all of you. Being a nomad, it's important for you to have a furry friend. You wanna have a buddy to travel with because usually we travel solo which I am solo now. I'm not on anybody else's timeline, but if I had a pet, I would almost sort of be on my furry friend's timeline. What do you do with your pet when you go into the store? Or if you're gonna be, uh, you know, out, if you're a tourist and you're gonna go to a museum or something like that, and you're gonna be gone for a few hours, what do you do with your pet? Okay. I suggest just knowing from what I, my friends that have pets, that you leave them in your van and you crack the window and you keep a fan going, just like I would do if I was in my van and it was summer and I didn't want to be out and about. I wanted to be in my van. I mean, that's my home. I can't be outside all the time. So you just, you crack the window and you leave a fan going, maybe a couple fans. But the real trick is don't be in uh, super hot weather. Don't do that. I, I have to leave Tucson at some point because it's going to start getting hot for me. And especially if I had a, had, a pup, had a dog, I'd say pet. You know, some of you travel with cats. I do like cats. But I don't I like kitty litter in my van. <laughs> I don't want that. So no, I would not have a cat. I would not travel with a cat. Um, but I do, I will tell you in Arizona, you can take your dog into the store with you. You can take your dog almost, almost anywhere in Arizona. I don't know if you can take it into a federal building or, or a city, like if you go into a city court or something, I don't think you can take your dog there. But if you're going into a store, yes, you can take your dog in Walmart. Um, I think you can take him into grocery stores because they understand that it does get hot in Arizona and they allow that. You, they don't want the dogs to be left out in the car. But I would not in the summer be in, in, in Tucson. I would be um, in higher elevation. But even there, you can take your pet into um, the store. Yeah. 
if you're going to be gone for the day, just go ahead and get a, um, a doggy daycare. You know, check them into daycare. It's not that expensive from what I hear. Because I remember um, Paul had to check in Abby a couple times into a daycare. And Abby sat in the van with the window down, but Abby was a bigger dog, so nobody wanted to mess with her. But I have seen little dogs with the window down, and I think, wow, somebody just reach in and grab that little dog. So I'm not sure. I wouldn't leave the window down too far. Now, here's another thing. I had friends that had um, smaller dogs, and they traveled with them. And their dogs really didn't want to go out that much. They wanted to stay in the car and just rest. And then when they were in there together, I'm sure they played. Um, but they would have really only want to go out when they had to go to the bathroom, and then they wanted to get back in the van. So I think it just depends on the dog. I mean, if you have a beagle or something like that, they're going to be, want to be out sniffing and smelling. You know, that's, that's their job. They want to go out and smell things and maybe chase things. So... But it really depends if you're going to travel with your pet, you know, get a nice sedate, um, you know, kind of pet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I did have somebody ask me why if you're in your van and I did have somebody ask me and it was yesterday's video. Yeah. And I talked about it. So. I mean, I obviously some people aren't watching the, the video all the way through. You know, I mean, I've got a lot to say. I've got good stuff to say. Watch my video all the way through. Um, but yeah, so my, my reply was, you didn't watch a video, did you? Go back and rewatch it. Thank you. <laughs> I know, kind of bossy, aren't I? Um, but the reason I flew here is because, number one, again, um, I don't want to put wear and tear on my van at this point. And I can get there faster, right? And, um, you know, I mean, and gas prices are high, right? And the last one is, um, why do I want to sit there? If, in order to go 1,800 miles and I could get there in three days, I would have to do eight hours a day of sitting and driving. After a while, it's, it's monotonous, just following the road, looking around, um, yeah, it's, it's monotonous as uh, staying safe on the highways. And then you have to turn around and go back. That's six days, eight hours. You know, that's no, it's just, I don't want to do that anymore. So I flew. Yeah. It doesn't, am I still a nomad? Heck yeah. Of course I am. I, um, we can, we can, we can do it any way we want to do it. Don't let anybody put you in a box. Don't do that. Uh, you can do you can do it the way you want to do it. And I do advocate. I live in the city. I'm not out boondocking. Is that uh, does that make me not uh, less of a nomad? Oh, contraire. No, I'm still a nomad. I live in my live in my minivan, and I can move whenever I want to. But <clears throat> I like being in the city. And a lot of us older gals, we don't want to be out boondocking all the time. We want the amenities of being in a city. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. I love it. So with that said, I'm going to say goodbye until tomorrow. Love you. Bye. Till tomorrow. Be here. Okay?